to be your brother. I'm so happy to be your sister. Glory, 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 glory. Ay, 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 Glory to God. Oh, we love the Lord. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. This morning, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom we love passionately, dearly, sincerely with all our heart. In his absence, we want to greet our beloved bishop, um, and we love him so much. We were talking early this morning. And uh, he informed me that God did such an amazing work for the few days that he's been in Limpopo. The leadership meeting was absolutely blessed. And God did just such a wonderful thing. And we're just so happy and we thank God uh, for the way that he's using our presiding bishop, Bishop Sono. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good praise offering. And just let him know that we love him and that... Is in our prayers. Uh, our mother this morning, we greet her, Mama Bishop. We love you so much. We bless God for you. We embrace you and thank you for just being such a warm, loving, gracious mother. We appreciate you with all our heart. Amen. Amen. And on all our pastors and their wives, our elders, our deacons, the people of God, wonderful to be with you in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me, please, to the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter. We will be reading together from verse 38 and 39. Matthew chapter number 26. This is the words of Christ just before he went to the cross. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you are created for the glory of God. My brothers and sisters, there are four very important questions that we need to consider this morning. Question number one, who am I? Question number two, where do I come from? Question number three, why am I here? Question number four, what are my skills, my gifts, and my purpose? Question number five, when I'm done here, where am I going to? When I'm done here, where am I going to? Somebody said, the value of life is not in its duration, but its donation. You are not important because of how long you live. You are important because of how effective your life is. Dr. Miles Monroe once said, Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Last quote by the same author. God's purpose is more important than your plans. We read in Matthew number 26, the words of Christ Jesus, our beloved and our blessed Lord. 
He's confronted with the reality of his death. Not too long from now, he will be hanging on the cross and he's confronted with this reality and he asked the disciples, please, let us go and pray. As they go to Gethsemane, they bow their hearts before the presence of this great God whom we serve. And Jesus went a little bit further. And there he fell before the presence of God. And he began to pray these powerful words. He says, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. He says, Father, let this cup that you are presenting to me pass. Everything within me does not want to participate. Everything within my human being or in my human sight does not want to drink from this cup. Let this cup pass without the necessity of me drinking from it. Ah, but then he says, Father, nevertheless, not my will. But let your will be done. The reason why Jesus ended his prayer with those words is because Jesus knew that he was there to fulfill the will of God our Father. Jesus said, I have come not to do my own will, but the will of him that have sent me. When you read the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, the Bible says in verse number 5 and 6, Wherefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice us an offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me, said Jesus. Below I come to do your will, as it is recorded of me in the volume of the book. When the angel of God appeared unto Mary and told her she was going to be with child, nine months later, Jesus, the Christ of God, was born. And after he was born, he grew up in the favor of both God and men. And the Bible said, when the fullness of time had come, he appeared and presented himself unto John so that he could fulfill the righteous requirement of the law of God. And thus, he was baptized in the Jordan. As soon as he was baptized, he went into the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in preparation for the great ministry for which God had called him. The Bible said when he was done, he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost and he began to preach the unadulterated kingdom of Almighty God. And he told the people, repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Bible said he went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil because God was with him. He preached the gospel, opened the eyes of the blind and stop the ears of the deaf, lose the tongue of the dumb, even raise the dead. Ah, Jesus Christ interacted with all manner and with all types of people. You know the narrative and the story of our blessed Lord, how he said, I have come to seek and to save those that are lost. They called him a glutton. Yes, they did. They called Call him a wine bubber. They said he's a friend of sinners. Ah, but Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save those that were lost. One day somebody said to him, let us follow you and let us see where you stay. He says to them, listen to me. He says, foxes have got holes. He says, birds have got nests. He says, I am so busy doing the will of God that I don't have the time to build a house. 
<laughs> Doing the will of him that sent him. Jesus was committed to serving our father. Jesus was committed. He knew who he was. Question number one. Jesus in his life knew who he was. He knew that he was the son of God. He knew number two where he came from. He knew that he came from the presence of of almighty God and that God had sent him into the earth question number three he knew he knew rather why he was here ask your neighbor neighbor do you know why you are here that's the problem with the church we don't know who we are. Secondly, we don't know where we come from. Let me tell you quickly where you come from. Bible says in the book of Ephesians, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings, who had chosen us in himself before the foundation of the world was laid. The Bible says in him you live, in him you move, in him you have your very being. The Bible says we know that all things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord, for them who are called according to his purpose for those whom God foreknew he called those whom he called he justified those whom he justified he glorified you say to me brother pastor where do I come from you come from the very presence of almighty God he's the one that created you he's the one that selected you he's the one that elected you he's the one that chose you in him Himself before the foundation of the world was laid. Hallelujah! 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 You are not here by chance. You are not here by accident. You are here in the divine providence of God Himself. Just like God sent Jesus, God chose you and God sent you to the earth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I tell your neighbor, neighbor, my father has sent me to the planet. You are here in the divine providence of God himself. The next question that we need to answer is why are you here? Are you just here? You see, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here, here is the problem. Herein lies the problem. As soon as you got here... Don't forget, you, you, you are a citizen of, of the kingdom of heaven. You, you are a foreign and a stranger. You are in the world, but not of the world. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a chosen generation. You, you are the people of almighty God. Your citizenship is in heaven. You, you, you carry a passport of the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is your home. God is your father. Jesus Christ is your old brother your family have sent you here you are here by your father's divine will and purpose yes the problem when you got here you were strange from that world from which you came they develop you in this world in which you are and you have grown accustomed to the philosophy the ethos and all of the different disciplines of this world 
they have developed you emotionally, intellectually. Uh, they, they've, they've developed you mentally and, and psychologically and otherwise. Uh, you, you, you've become so accustomed to the norms of, and the standards of this world uh, that you have now become estranged uh, from the kingdom from whence you come. You say, how can this be possible? Let me explain. You see, when a woman is pregnant, 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 you've seen a pregnant woman, isn't it? Isn't it true that if you would have a conversation with a child that's in the womb of the mother and you say to the baby, Yay! Panagid, Kunya! And the baby replied, I have a right and and how are you? And you say to the baby, well, I'm, I'm so, I'm so black, black, ecstatic and happy because the sun is shining over here and, and we're having a wonderful weather and, and I'm so delighted and excited because I'm in Cape Town and, and I'm just looking at the sea and, and I'm just looking at the mountains and, and you have this conversation with the baby that's in the mother's womb. The baby responds ridiculously and says, what madness are you talking about? Because the baby's reality, there's no sea, there's no sunshine, there's no water, there, there's, there, there, there's water, but not the sea, there's no rivers, there's no birds, there's no mountains. What are you talking about? This is a strange language that you are talking about. Ah, then you tell baby, baby, it doesn't mean because in your world it doesn't exist. Uh, 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 it also does not mean that it does not exist in my world. In your world there's no mountains but in my world there's mountains. The sun is here. There's lions. There's tigers. There's cheetahs. Baby wait, wait, wait. Wait until you get out of your world into my world and then you will see what I see. The same is true with the citizens of the kingdom of God. And even though you estrange, your father calls you and he says, Be thou not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove and test what is the good, the pleasurable and acceptable will of God for your life. Next thing that's very critical and important is the fact that you need to know even though you are here to get a good education and you to be trained and you to be groomed and you to be developed, that's not God. That's not God's primary purpose for your life. Even though you are encouraged to get a job and to make a living, that too is not God's primary purpose for your life. Even though you get married, you fall in love, you get married, and you have children. Children, that's not God's primary purpose for your life. Even though you acquire some wealth, you build a successful business, that too is not God's primary purpose for your life. Why? I explain why. Because why naked have you come into this world and naked are you going to leave this world? The degrees that you have, are oh, they pale in comparison to the wisdom of God. The money that you've acquired, it's going to remain in your estate when you leave to go back from where you come from. All of the things that you've got, that you've secured by the power of your hand, they are going to remain here. When is the last time that you went to a funeral? Have you seen that at a funeral? It's only the coffin that stands there. And the body of the person that used to live on the earth. There's no trailer on the back of the, the coffin. There's no house. There's no money. There's absolutely nothing. The body may be a dawn, ah, but the resident has gone. He's no more. And that's what you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that one day, heaven is going to call your name and you will have to go back to him that sent you to the earth that's the reason why you've got to ask yourself the question why am I here I've got the education I've got the degree I'm talented I'm gifted I'm highly favored
prophet. I've got a wife. I've got a wife. I've got a husband. I've got children. I've got a business. I've got money. But what is the purpose and the will of God for my life? You've got to ask that question. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are you here? They said to Jesus, they said, to him, Master, Master, wh why don't you just eat a little bit? He says, listen, my boys. He says, listen, remember when he was dealing with the woman at the well. He said, Bafanagit, listen to me. He says, I've got me to eat that you don't know nothing about. My meat, the thing that satisfies me, the things that gives me joy, the thing that gives me power, the thing that keeps me propelling and moving forward is when I do the will of my father. When I serve God and do his will, I find supernatural strength. I find supernatural ability. I get up early in the morning, late at night in order to do the will of the father. I'm here to submit to you, the child of God. Your house cannot satisfy you. Your cars cannot satisfy you. Your money cannot satisfy you. Your children cannot satisfy you. Your husband, your wife, they cannot satisfy you. But if you say, nevertheless, not my will, let my will be done, you'll find fulfillment in doing the will of God. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Why are you here? You're going to make a lot of money and then? And then? And then? You don't work for God? You, 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 you don't labor for the master? You, you, you forgotten conveniently that your citizenship is not from down here? You had forgotten that you are an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. You are the light of the world. You are sitting on top of the hill. You, 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 you are that candle that, that, that has been lit that needs to, to dispel the darkness. You are your father's representative. I admonish you in the presence of him that's soon to come and that will judge both the living and the dead, even Christ, our Lord and Savior. If ever there was a time that you needed to roll up your sleeves and get entangled and involved in the work of God, that time is now. Listen to Jesus. Jesus says, lay not up for yourself treasures here on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves does not break in and steal. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, where is your heart? Your heart is on, my heart is on my house, wrong place. My heart is on my business, wrong place. My heart is on my money, wrong place. My heart is on my children, wrong place. My heart is on my husband, wrong place. My heart is on my wife, wrong place. My heart is to get a few more degrees, wrong place. Your heart has got to be centered in the kingdom of heaven. You are here as your father's child. You are supposed to to become a soul winner. That's your primary purpose. You are supposed to dispel the darkness and let the light of the glory of God so shine in your life so that men may see your good works and your Father in heaven be glorified. You are supposed to be his hands extended. God, Jesus, wants to live his life through you. He wants to talk through you. He wants to see through you. He wants to listen through you. He wants 
to walk with your feet. He wants to touch with your hands. He wants to be a soul winner through you. He wants to show mercy. He wants to show compassion. You say, ah, oh, brother pastor, you know what? I'm just, just an ordinary student. It doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter whether you're black, white, whether you're navy blue like me, it really doesn't matter. All of us are called by God. Our primary purpose is to be representatives of the kingdom of God. You've, you've, you've got to work while it is day. You've got to save souls. Tell your family about Jesus. Tell them about the grace of God, the mercies of God. Become an evangelist. Go to your father's family. Go to your mother's family. Go to Ngunu, Rangwan. Go to them. Tell them about Jesus. This gospel, do you believe this gospel? I ask, do you believe this gospel? If you say to me, yes, brother pastor, I believe the gospel. The question that I ask is a very simple one. How can you see yourself in heaven rejoicing with the angels of God and with Jesus Christ for eternity and eternity and your mothers and your fathers your brothers and your sisters and your aunties are not saved they are not born again listen to me you do not want even your worst enemy to go to hell that's the reason why you cannot wait for the pastors and the bishops and the preachers your responsibility is a collective one it's a joint one you've got to go with us go tell your father go tell your mother there is a cross that bleeds there is a spirit that fills there is a word that breaks the chains and break the shackles let God use you to win souls for the kingdom of God win your family for Christ Tell them about Jesus. Show mercy. Show compassion. Don't judge. Don't be cynical. And don't be critical. Why are you here? Listen to Paul. Tina. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. And to good works, which God predestined, we will walk in when we get here. You are a soul saver. You've got to pray for the sick, the vulnerable, the afflicted, the oppressed. You, you've got to make time for the, for the disenfranchised, for the, for the marginalized. You, you've, you've got to, you've, listen, I became a soul winner when I was 70 years of age. You are not too young to tell people about Jesus. Tell them, what are you doing? You are laying up for yourself. A treasures in heaven. The Bible says, ye that win souls is wise. The problem with the church, can I tell you the problem? Just about done. Is this new gospel that they preach? Mm. You see, that's quiet. Yeah, in the Methodist church, because we don't like to hear about this new gospel. This new message that I preach is a message of self-actualization. Self-aggrandizement. It's about me, my house, my car, my blessing. God, bless me, bless me now. I want my blessing. I want, I want it now. Sevenfold, thirtyfold, uh, sixtyfold. In thirty days. Hey, when? Hey, when? What's wrong with you? Do you think that God is at your beck and call? Do you think that God is supposed to jump because some lying prophet says 30 days and 60 days? Do you think it's about you? It's about your house, your breakthrough, your money, your bar. Your... 
Is it not written in our book? If any man wants to follow me and become my disciple, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and let him follow me. And where I am, there will my disciple be too. It's never been about you. It's about Jesus, the King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that died vicariously on that cross. It has always been about Jesus. You are supposed to be a glorified slave. Paul said, woe be unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Who told you it's about you? God must just jive every time you open your... It's, it's just... Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh -uh. It's wrong. Tell you, it's wrong. He's the master. He's the savior. He's the one that died for us. He's the one that showed us the example. What does your life mean for the kingdom of God? When is the last time that you testified about Jesus? Who's the last soul? That you saved for Christ. If you go and you look at your, 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 your family history. Who in your family have you won for Jesus? My mother. Very stubborn Makosa woman. Hey, mom. Yo, 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 yo. There I am, and I'm preaching for everybody and telling everybody about Jesus. But mama does not want to hear nothing. Mama is in the Amatlozi. Her sister used to stay here in Orlando, Baza Baza Street. And mama's sister, my auntie, was a bona fide sango. You, you see my dilemma. You see my dilemma. But I prayed, I went on my knees and said, God, here I am. I'm winning souls for you all over the world. I'm telling people about Jesus. Lord, how is it going to be? I'm in heaven rejoicing and mama is in hell. That cannot be. I'll take authority and dominion over the forces of darkness, the spirits that work in the children of disobedience. I bind it at the sword and I prayed for my mother year in and year out until one day mama got sick and the doctor said she was going to die. I went to and I thought now is my chance I said mama listen to me I represent the kingdom of God I represent a Christ by whose stripes you have been healed I said mama if you will accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and as the savior of your life he will heal you long story short mama said my son pray for me I want to accept this Jesus of yours I prayed for her and she accepted Jesus and the Lord healed my mother from from sickness and after a few weeks mom was up and running and going about the business long story short I led mama to Christ not once not twice before she died this was the covenant between me and God I said God before mama died I want to be there I don't want to be in Ghana I don't want to be in Kenya I don't want to be in Ethiopia I want to be right there and on the day mama died, I was right there by her bedside. I sang for my mother. I prayed with her. Because there's no way that I can go to heaven. And the woman that brought me into this world is going to hell. And as we prayed and as we sang, she slipped away into the kingdom of God. My mother is saved and she's waiting for me on the other side. Let me give you the last testimony my brother, hey, Muna, 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 yay. The man could drink. He drank like a fish ma. Ah, but I prayed for him. His name was Booty. The English name Frank. Yeah. The tribe name was Bomvana. Yes. The man, Booty. 
I talked to him about Jesus and I told him about the love of God. When he's drunk, I will embrace him and love him the same. Long story short, one Sunday morning, I preached this gospel. And as I looked over the crowd, I saw there's Obut sitting. And when I gave the altar call, I saw my Obut raising his hand. And then I saw him walk forward and he came and stood here before the presence of God. I was crying. The congregation was crying. We were so happy because of the grace of God that appeared unto him. Long story short, we led him to Christ. I asked Pastor George, please deal with him, walk with him, love him and do whatever you need to do. I said to him, listen, I'm coming there tomorrow. Monday, I went to go and see the man. I said to him, listen, Obut, I'm going to Kenya to go and preach. But when I'm back, I'm coming and we are going to walk together, serve God together. It's going to be a wonderful journey. He says, no, it's all right, Banagit. You go, you go and do what you need to do. When you get back, you'll find me here. I got onto an airplane. I went. I finished in Mombasa. When I was done, I went to Nairobi. Just as I landed, there the phone ring. Tring, tring, tring. Hello. Hello. How? Who is this? Uncle, here's my boy. Your father, your brother, my father, has just died. Few days before he died, God sent him to the church for me to lead him to Christ. Wednesday, he went to heaven. Let's be soul winners. Story after story I can tell you. Let's be soul winners. Let's be merciful. Let us do the will. Come, gentlemen. Let us do the will of him that have called us. Show mercy to the poor. Be a tither. Be sincere. And be generous in your offering. Enable our bishop to do what God has called him to do. There's more churches that we need to buy. There's more souls that we need to save. There's more pastors that Bishop wants to train and to groom and to develop. Like me, you might have a son and you don't know that the hand of God is upon his life. Be faithful to God. Be diligent with your, 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 your devotion to God. Because the hand of God might just be upon your son. It might be upon your daughter. Let us not become a stumbling block for our Bishop. No. Let's support him. Let's pray for him. Let's plead him under the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's ask God to give him power and strength so that he can fulfill the will of God. Paul says, be imitators of me as I imitate Christ. And as Bishop imitate Christ, we will imitate him. We will love people. He was telling me the other day when we were talking about this boy that's in prison. He, he's been ministering to him. and help. What type of a man is this? I asked, do you know him? He said, no. What? Yes. I've been to prison a few times. I went to go and ministered with him and prayed with him. The boy grew up without a father. He's so angry. He says to me, he says, and the only representation of fatherhood that he's got is what he's seen in us. He says, and here I am ministering to him and trying to help him. Bishop Musa Sono, what? You, you, you mean to tell me, given your profile and, and given you still have time to go to a prison cell and talk to a nobody? Yes. Yes. Because that's the reason why God sent me here. I gotta close. That's the introduction. I'm coming back. Listen to the Bible.
Blessed are the dead in Christ. Henceforth, they rest from their labor and their works follow them. You are not supposed to die until you've worked for God. You've been working for yourself. You've been working for your family. But you have not been working for him that sent you here. Would you stand? Would you stand, please? The choir is supposed to be soul winners. Hello, choir. How are you? The band. This is not primary, secondary. Our first responsibility is we are soul winners. The boys on the cameras and the girls on the cameras, all of the helpers, all of the ushers, everybody, all of us, soul winners. Raise your hands to the Father. Open your mouth and take two minutes. Say, Father, not my will, thy will be done. Pray. Just pray. Take two, three minutes and just pray. Ask God to soften your heart. Ask God to make you sensitive. So that you can make your father proud. So that you can be a soul winner for Christ. So that you can show people mercy and compassion and grace. So that the benevolence, the kindness and the compassion of God would flow through you towards other people. Don't think of yourself too highly. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and resist the devil and God would exalt you. He will flow through you, work through you, speak through you, think through you. You will become a channel through which the blessing of God would come to the people. It's never been about us. It's always been about him that have sent us to the earth. Open your mouth and begin to talk to him. Ask him, Lord, help me to be a soul winner. Help me to live for you. Help me, Lord, to become your hands extended. Oh, God, live your life through me. Let me be a blessing. Oh, God. Save my family. Save my friends. Help me to be a blessing to the people that I work with everywhere I go. Help me to be a blessing, Lord. Rosondo rio sendaria kaya lima ya ya na na ketato lisando rio sendaria Lord help us, help us. Not our will. Let Your will be done, O oh God. Help us to live our lives for Your glory and for Your honor. Help us to deny ourselves. Help us to take up our cross and to follow You. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be soul winners. Help us to be men and women that are filled with compassion and mercy and the love of God. Help us, oh God, to win our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our nieces, our nephews, our uncles, our aunts. Help! Help us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Nevertheless, oh God, not our will, your will be done in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our children's lives, in our marriages. Oh God, let your will be done in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Rondo, let's end the beketata na manda da boche, rimanda da boche. Yeah, 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 we'll see the makana matata la bakate. Let's send the yasala la boche. Nando and the yasala la bakata. Nando send the bakata ta boche. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I surrender. Whoa. Hallelujah. Jesus, I Hallelujah. Oh, my blessed Savior, Father, as we stand before your presence. We look at the example of our Lord and our Savior. In the garden, despite the turbulence of the soul, he said, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. Today, help us to embrace your eternal will. Our life here on earth is very short. Very short. We only have so much time. We've been working for ourselves. We've been following our own hearts. Our own dreams. Our own desires. This morning, oh God, I pray forgive us. That we have neglected to ask the very important question. Why am I here? From today we embrace your eternal will and your purpose. And we pray now that you would help us to become like Jesus. Help us to represent you in the earth the way he did in the disciples. Help us, O oh God, that our hearts will be filled with love, with compassion with grace, with truth, with justice, with fairness. Help that we will be merciful and compassionate towards all men and that we would not discriminate on the basis of economic status, gender, culture, or whatever difference there might be. But like Jesus, we will embrace everybody and win everybody for Christ. Help us to start with our families. Give us a burden and a desire to see our family members safe. Husbands and wives and children, parents and children, aunties and uncles and cousins, nieces and nephews, and down the line to the community, to the nation, to the continent. Help us to be soul winners for your glory and for your honor. Help us, O oh God, to be loyal and committed to the words of Jesus. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Help us to be faithful to death. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name.